Kai. I'm from China. And for me, art is a thing that supported me uh, from my hardest and most uh, depressing time because by then I just couldn't get up uh, doing my homework or like even go to sleep and the art was the only thing I could do by that time. So, so for me, art is a thing that I will always keep making no matter what. In, my, in the past, most of my artworks were about trauma now I'm more focusing on specific like childhood trauma. So I started using soft materials, uh, fabric to express uh, that kind of softness. Um, uh, especially, um, I always have a, a, a little doll, a koala doll with me and she was like a figure that I, when I feel hard or like depressed she she was the figure that gave me comfort so i feel like this kind of art form will also give audiences the comfort so it is a little figure that is about like a kid it's about three or four years old it has uh, two long arms extending out it looks like it's hugging someone they also have another pair of uh, long arms um wrap around their own neck and suffo suffocating themselves. Um, it also has a sound that the audiences can, can hear saying, can you hug me when they walk by? And I, I think this piece uh, is an uh, expression about a, a figure that did not get attention, like a kid did not get enough attention or enough hugs when they were little. Um, I do think hugging is uh, one of the most basic psychological needs for kids and even adults. So my name is Sora and I'm from China. Mm -hmm. And like, um, like how about like my art, like why I do art, it's all about like searching my self-expression because before I can have this chance or rights to do like choose art as my career, like I always live in other people's rules like my parents or the environment I'm in but like in doing making art, like almost all almost this painting that I can like just be myself and I can know like who am I and what I really want for me so that's why I start like to pursue art and also like I can come here like in New York and doing art it's also I fight for my rights yeah I gain this chance so I really appreciate it too mm -hmm. so right now like making art for me is like a changing point of my career like before I come here and I always make like fine arts as like oil painting really academical but um, that time I'm really focused on technique and also that's what my parents want. I'm mainly focused on what is my work, what I wanted to say to myself. So through this time work, like I made a donuts and animation, it's a really basic form for me. And I think right now I'm really clear about my language, like my theme, my topic. It's about like relationship or feelings between, like established from this relationship. So that's what I'm making art for right now. I use a wire type of work, like I paint and I like also, I, I made like third animation for this whole, but I choose one. And it's all about like finding stuff, like what is the thing I most wanted to talk. And right now I think through this work, I know what's the thing I really want to talk and I need to talk about. I, I think this work is the first work that I really make for myself. I'm Lu Xiang, and uh, I'm from Ningbo, China. My background is literature, and uh, after several years, I feel like something can't express in words. Most of my art are, are related to the theme of spirituality, because my home background, because my parents believe in Buddhism, and also my BFA is Chinese traditional literature or Chinese classics literature. So I'm deeply influenced by the Taoism and Buddhism. Their video is like a brief narrative of my novel. Their video has two parts. 
-hmm. The first part are the main character in an AI who come back to Earth from another planet. It's it's about her monologue and contempla contemplation in forest. Mm -hmm. It's about questioning the essence of human consciousness. Uh, the second part is um, a short sci-fi story about about the inner alchemy in Taoism, and because I feel like feel like our uh, inner alchemy in Taoism is very related to the human evolution. Mm -hmm. So I combine it with the transhumanism and also the quantum space time. Hi, my name is Camila Baron. I am from Bogota, Colombia. Um, I was born and raised there and I moved to New York 2013 to study architecture. And I quickly gravitated back towards art because it was something that I've been doing since I was very little. I've been drawing, painting. I've always been drawn to the kind of more creative side of things and spontaneous side of things. My work really it's, is a lot about who I am today as a person, but also the spaces I grew up in and the things that I learned from nature, spaces around me. I'm currently working on a series that's called Topographies, and it relates to this idea of the process when architects analyze and learn from the space where they're gonna build something and they try to understand the elevations and the vegetation and the different characteristics of a land to be able to interact with it, build on it, or, or learn from it. So in my process, it is more of a kind of cognitive process of, of how to understand nature through painting and hopefully also leading myself to understand it better. And I believe that this understanding of nature is one of the most important things that I believe we've forgotten nowadays. Um, it is our connection with uh, technology and our constant distraction with so much information and things that, that we've lost some kind of understanding of the world around us and we lack a uh, lot of the patience and skills that required to learn from the world around us. This process is what drives the paintings really. Um, I have, I try to work from memory because that is part of what I'm trying to test, how much I can observe, how much I can learn by just looking at things and trying to remember them when I'm in my studio. And working with elements like water, so laying the paintings on the floor and pouring water on them and working with the colors and pushing the paint around. And in that process, I'm very much just using what's there in the moment and reading the way that the paint is interacting with the water and creating almost this rhythm, this like energy that's what's pulling and pushing the paint and these waves that end up uh, being very similar to what a topography map, in my opinion, looks like. Color is very important for me because of the emotion it can convey um, and the shapes and the textures that come with it and through the layers of paint and textures and everything also kind of engage with my own process and show my own process and be very transparent about the process that's behind every painting. And hopefully I can invite more people or suggest to look at the world in a certain way or observe a little bit more or a little bit more attention of what's around us. Uh, my name is Tom Hecht. I'm from New York and I started by going to college to study architecture and I went to this really small um, creative program. By the time I finished my fourth year I it was clear that I was going to become an artist and my professors encouraged me and the school encouraged me. I make art because it gives me a way to have conversations with myself about really personal questions that I have and give a visual language to it. Some of the themes that I've been looking at right now are um, kind of like different stages of life and trying to discuss those stages of life with um, 
like a vocabulary that you see in games, like board games or sports? Well, because I'm in my last year at SCA, I'm preparing to start my thesis project, which is going to be a very committing body of work. As I was sketching that thesis project out, there was there were certain parts that I was that I wanted to make other works leading up to it to sort of like learn from. And so I decided to make one of those versions for that for this exhibition for this class. I knew it would just give me a lot of insight um, moving forward. So this this piece is about a running track and trying to distort the running track and try and give it some anthropomorphic characteristics. My name is Peo. I'm from China. I'm a painter. Um, um, I started drawing and painting in 2011, and uh, the earliest things I learned uh, was a uh, traditional, very traditional Chinese painting, like crush and uh, sketch. Last year, I was a uh, continued doing my landscape painting. I started landscape painting in my college. I remember it's sophomore year. I'm very interested in landscape because there's a you know very tough family situation going on. So I feel landscape can bring me a lot of peaceful in that time. It's kind of personally for me it's kind of like medicine. So this is my second year at SVA. Right now I'm doing abstract painting. I do have like four fi abstract figures in my painting. They are transferred from tree figure. Um, I feel after a year of study um, in the grad school, I think it's a better time to be honest with myself and uh, want to do things I, I don't want to, I, I didn't want to face before. So right now I just feel more confident doing doing painting because last day I'm kind of like very nervous and uh, sometimes I, I, there was, was a few occasions I feel very lost and right now I just feel more mature. Hi, my name is Silvia Muleo and I'm a painter. I was born in 1998 and I came to the United States one year ago after completing my bachelor degree in painting. My work consists of different media, site-specific installation, photographs, painting, drawings and videos. I'm interested in the way we understand reality and construction related to the idea of living in between physical and digital spaces. I articulate my research through studies of light and its reflection, both as a phenomenon and as a metaphor. For my site-specific work, I use interventions on reflective surfaces through photography to manipulate public spaces. The work has an evanescent and ephemeral quality to it, and it needs to be discovered. It is fully complete when the viewer engages with it. For the show, I simulated a life-size reflection on the window of the gallery. The subjects are some of the artists in the show caught in different mundane behaviors, like taking a selfie or checking themselves through a reflection. The print blends in with the rear reflection on the window and overlaps with the image of people passing by. On one side, the work makes it harder to see your reflected image and on the other side, it creates a distance that lets you see your own behavior as a human. Hi, my name is Nian Xin. I come from China. My practice began with that feel of disconnect between purpose and method. Also, the incongruent of cause and effect in my earlier education context. This gave me a strong interest in absurdist literature and cubism. It had a powerful influence on my work. That's how I start. My current work back and forth between painting, 3D model, and video 
I like the handmade imperfection of paintings collide with the irelessness of digital. In this work, I recreate physical sculpture and digital sculpture based on my painting. I deconstruct the character in my painting so the viewer can see the same figure in completely different angle. In conversation, I observed the stock in, in traditional Chinese painting combined with still life in Western painting. Hi, I'm Rosie. Yeah. Um, I'd like to describe myself multidisciplinary artist. I do make installation, digital sculpture, and paintings. I'm trying to focus on painting at the moment. My background is jewelry design and I wanted to explore something else in art field so I switched up my MFA to fine art. My biggest influence artist is probably Louis Brzoa and Sophie Kahl in terms of fame and I also admire artists like Sai Tongli, uh, Matisse and Da Kooning in terms of their color palettes and their um, abstract expressions. And, and it shifted to my practice, it influenced a lot of my practice as well because I use a figure as a form of expression and a primary visual language. Lots of my reference coming from mythology and alchemical element. So I use those images to collage, juxtapose, and combine, transform to place them in a new form of visual language. I'm intrigued by the idea of emotional contradiction and uncertainty of desire. So I'm trying to um, visualize and symbolize this abstract concept of desire. And so I was thinking about the lost memory, the dislocated state, also like a dream state. So I'm trying to reconnect those fragment pieces into one. So I'm creating my new story in my work. I didn't set up the straight guideline for the viewer to how to look at them. I like to make a lot of bleed, a lot of blank and question mark to my piece. And not only that piece in the gallery, but also all of my work. Um, my name is Jing Yao Huang. I'm from Guangzhou, China. I am a photography and an installation artist. So first, my undergrad is photography and video. After four years study skill and techniques, I want to expand the boundaries of photography and installation from panel space into physical space. So I think photography as a young medium, well, compared with the traditional art medium, it is young. I don't want to just print it and mount it with an elegant frame. I want to explore the relationship of image and different kind of materials and see how photo to uh, materialize the behavior of thoughts, memory fragment, and society. And also my work um, focus on seeking the regulation of time, ideology, and memory in the space we're living in, which is the continual progress of the timeline. The work in the gallery right now is from the Echo From series. It is a series combined with um, different small sculpture, each of uh, which is, has its own name as the period of time I make them. I try to organize everyday language, thoughts, and emotion through this set of practice. In the form of a diary, materialize the behavior of this period of time into sculpture. There is no fixed definition of this series, but its behavior is to shift the meaning of the surrounding environment, emotions, and thoughts uh, for a period of time. I am not only a patient, a guinea pig, or a lab rat. I'm an individual who faces challenges on a daily basis that must be overcome to survive. This identity can be applied to any other living thing, though the details may differ. I create in order to process my experiences. I want to find connection with the viewer through color, texture, and motion. I seek to portray imagery unlike what is usually seen. I want my work to encompass the viewer and serve as prompt for questions, self-exploration, how they relate to others, and introspectivity.
I use medical imaging from my endometriosis surgeries as reference for my work. I manipulate liquid acrylics and India ink on a variety of surfaces and I'm interested in imperfection, control versus the lack thereof, layering and illumination. My work is process-based. The unpredictability of how the mixtures I create interact mirrors the unpredictability of my life and past experience, facing the challenges created by chronic conditions. The palette I use is inspired by the palette of my internal self. My organs, fat, muscle, sinew, scar tissue, and misplaced endometrial cells. Endo is a mutation of how the body should function, and my work is a mutation of a body of materials congealed as one. Hi, my name is Yulia Rani Primar. I'm a multimedia artist. I was born in 1986 in Tel Aviv, and I grew up between Tel Aviv and New York. I've always been around artists. My parents are both artists. I lived and breathed and grew up with art all around me since a very young age. Um, it's always been a way for me to understand myself and the world around me. I focus mostly on sculpture and drawing in the last years, but I've been doing film and photography and the theme that I'm exploring helps drive what uh, technique I'm looking for. In this specific installation, I'm using both a lithographic print and 3D printing, plaster a powder printer and a resin printer. It was interesting for me how we can use these different techniques that are um, using this the idea of the copy of a printer to create original imagery and this hybrid of high tech and low tech regard to this specific installation which is called but my name was eliza day and that is a line from the song of nick cave and kylie minow um, of their song where the wild roses grow and i was just interested in exploring like different themes from um that song that song which um references an uh, irish legend of eliza day um, who was this wild, uh, sensual woman and um, this man that came into the village, who fell in love with her and ended up murdering her. The installation, I thought about it as a forensic scene um, to uncover the name of this, this woman. You have there kind of a scene that is kind of like Ophelia, which is the print, uh, the lithographic print and um, the 3D printer, uh, printed materials are using kind of hybrid between um, very, uh, like, I wanted to use uh, like mythological imagery, kind of like um, personal mythology, but also stuff from like everyday moments, mundane moments. And it's a kind of investigation into um, the identity of this uh, nameless woman.